so in this video i'll be explaining some of the causes of infertility some of the reasons why you are not getting pregnant now if you've not watched the first video where i explain this whole diagram and the process of fertilization please do me a favor and go and see that video because it will really help you in understanding some of the causes of infertility so let's start from the very first one and that is lack of ovulation we already know that ovulation is the release of the egg from the ovary if you don't ovulate it simply means you don't release your eggs and if you don't release your eggs there will be nothing to fertilize so getting pregnant will be very difficult if not impossible and there are a lot of reasons why some women don't ovulate for example women who have hormonal issues like pcos or high levels of prolactin you know your prolactin levels are high when you are not breastfeeding you are not pregnant but each time you squeeze your oranges something will come out you need to go and check your prolactin levels because if your prolactin levels are very high it will stop you from ovulating and can be one of the causes of infertility age can also be a factor when talking about ovulation as we age the number of times we ovulate starts to reduce so a woman who is not ovulating cannot get pregnant now let's talk about timing intercourse see if you are ovulating but you're always baby dancing at the wrong time you will not get pregnant i've said it before the lifespan of this egg is 12 to 24 hours which means once you release this egg it must be fertilized within this time frame if not the body will take it back but for the sperm cells they can live in the body of a woman for about three to five days now having sex on your ovulation day leaves you with just 12 to 24 hours to get this egg fertilized or you're out for the month but having sex two days three days before ovulation means that you will have sperm cells ready to fertilize the egg they will be in your body waiting for the egg to be released for them to fertilize it another important thing to note is that sperm cells will not just go straight to the egg to fertilize it no these swimmers must undergo something called capacitation this is what will enable them fertilize this egg if they are not capacitated they cannot fertilize this egg and this process can take as long as seven hours sometimes 10 hours so you need to time yourself in a way that even if the swimmers undergo all the processes in the whole world they will still meet this egg and fertilization will still take place i'm going to make another video and in that video i'm going to explain the best time to baby dance if you're trying to conceive okay let's move on let's talk about blocked fallopian tubes so you've released your egg right but then there is something blocking your tubes you have a blockage in your tubes there is no way these swimmers will meet your egg because there is a blockage there is something separating them which means fertilization will not take place if it is only one tube that is blocked let's imagine that this tube is open and this one is blocked any month you ovulate from this tube nothing will happen no fertilization but any month you ovulate from this one this one that is open there is a possibility that you will get pregnant but if both tubes are blocked then there is a problem there is a very big problem because no matter how good your ovulation is the swimmers cannot meet your egg so pregnancy will not happen and what are the things that can block your tube PID, pelvic inflammatory disease, endometriosis, large fibroids, adhesions. Let's go to the next one. Now let's talk about age. As women, we get to a certain age that we have more abnormal eggs than normal ones. And if the egg you release for the month is abnormal, it will not be fertilized. It is just natural. It will not be fertilized because that egg is not normal. And even if fertilization happens, this egg will not implant itself or even if it does a miscarriage will happen this is just nature's way of cleansing things that are not compatible with life and this is why age is very very important when we are talking about fertility if you're already at that age where you have more abnormal eggs than the normal ones it means that most of the time when you ovulate it is abnormal egg and that egg will not be fertilized so fertility decreases with age now let's talk about the swimmers the sperm cells because men have fertility issues too if you're a man watching this video don't go away you are going to learn a thing or two from this video the ability of these swimmers to fertilize the egg depends on so many things and i'm going to explain them 
But first, I want you to note that you cannot see the sperm cells. They are microscopic in nature, which means you can only see the sperm cells with a microscope. That thing you see, that white liquid you see at the point of ejaculation is semen. It is called semen. And the actual sperm cells live inside the semen. Keep this at the back of your mind because we are going to come back to this later. The first thing we are going to talk about is sperm count. A normal sperm count should be at least 15 million per meal. If your sperm count is lower than 15 million per meal, then you have low sperm count. And that may be the reason why your wife is not getting pregnant. I know that at this point, you are wondering why you need millions of sperm cells when it is only one sperm cell that will fertilize this egg. I will explain. Now, after the whole thing, after the sweat sweat, millions of sperm cells are deposited in the vagina. So you start off with millions of sperm cells. But because the vagina is acidic in nature and sperm cells, they don't like acidic environment, thousands of them will die in the vagina. And when your wife stands up after the sweat sweat, thousands will still flow out of the vagina. And then the rest of the sperm cells will try to make it into the womb. But because there is cervical mucus here, thousands of them will be trapped in the cervical mucus. So not all of them will make it into the womb. Now, the ones that made it into the womb will have to undergo capacitation. I've explained this process in my previous video. Capacitation is what will enable these stem cells to fertilize the egg. Unfortunately, not all of them will complete this process. This will further reduce the number of stem cells available. So you see, sperm cells encounter a lot of obstacles on their way to meet the egg. And when they finally get to this egg, you, you don't need one sperm cell. You need a lot of them. Because remember I told you that this egg, there is a protective covering, a protective layer. So you need a lot of sperm cells to work together to break down the protective layer covering the egg. And when this is broken, one of them will finally penetrate and fertilize this egg. So yes, you need millions so that by the time they overcome all these obstacles, you will still have some left to fertilize this egg. If your sperm count is low, you need to work on it to achieve pregnancy. Let's talk about motility. Motility simply means movement. So your sperm count is 100 million. Beautiful. Another question is this. Do they have the ability to move? Because the journey is far all the way from the vagina to the womb and into the fallopian tubes. Do they have the ability to move? It is not about the count. You need to have a good count, yes. But they also need to have the ability to move. If you have 100 million counts, but they don't move, they are just there in the vagina. Or their movement is not progressive. They are just at a spot or moving just in small, small circles. There is no way they will come in contact with the egg. That means fertilization cannot happen. So after considering your sperm count, consider motility. Do they have the ability to move? Another one is morphology. Now, morphology simply refers to the shape and structure of your sperm cells. If majority of your sperm cells are abnormal in shape, they have abnormalities, they cannot penetrate this egg or even fertilize it. So yes, you may have very good counts and they are all moving or majority of them are moving, but then they are abnormal in shape. They cannot fertilize the egg, they cannot penetrate it, which means fertilization will still not happen. So as a man, you need to ask yourself these three questions. How good is your count? Like I said, your count should at least be 15 million per male for you to achieve pregnancy. How well do your sperm cells move? Are they even moving at all? If yes, is the movement progressive? Are they going forward, going towards the egg or they are just going around in circles or just moving at a spot? If your motility is good, how is your morphology? How many of your sperm cells are abnormal in shape? How many of them are normal in shape? If majority of them have abnormalities, there won't be pregnancy. So the point is this. The fact that you ejaculate does not mean that you are fertile. Remember that I told you that that white um, liquid that you can see is just the semen. Now, it is possible that you are ejaculating, but there are no sperm cells in that your semen or you have low sperm count. So it is not only about ejaculation, there are a lot of things that you have to consider. And the only way for you to know if you are truly healthy is to follow your wife to the hospital and do a semen analysis. They will tell you what your sperm count is, how many sperm cells you have. They will also tell you if your sperm cells are moving or not. They will also tell you if most of your sperm cells are normal or abnormal in shape. 
I don't want this video to be too long, but before I go, let us go through some of the things that negatively affect your sperm cells. I will start from the ones you don't like, alcohol, drinking and smoking. I know some of you will be saying, eh, I know a man that drinks and smokes excessively, but he has about 10 children. Now, don't ever forget that our bodies are not the same. Mr. Neka may be drinking a lot and smoking a lot and he will still give birth to as many children as he wants. But you, the way you react to alcohol will be different from the way his body reacts to alcohol. So if you want to boost your sperm health, stay away from excessive drinking and excessive smoking. Another one is unhealthy diets. Too much sugar, too much processed food. They are killing you. They are not helping you. Stay away from them. High temperature. Now, one thing about high temperature is that it reduces sperm production. Stop wearing tight underwear. Allow your handbag to breathe. If you're always leaving it hot down there, sperm production will be affected. Try to keep it cool. Infections. I don't need to talk too much about this one. You already know that infections, they are not good for you. If you have any infections and then you're battling infertility, just go and treat the infection. That is the first step. Another one is low levels of testosterone. That is the male hormone. Yes, a man can have hormonal imbalance. And then there is something called varicose cell. It can also cause male infertility. That is a topic for another day. Again, there are some medications that can affect a man's fertility. We don't have the time to go into all of these things. But this is a plea from me to you. Please follow your wife to the hospital. The problem might actually be from your swimmers. And I pray for everyone trying to conceive. May your answers come with speed. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'll be in the comment section and I'll happily answer your questions. Baby dust to you all. Bye.